Welcome to the second part of No Defenses NBA Season Projections. Is the Eastern Conference as close as the Western Conference? Who leads the Eastern Conference? Do the Knicks or the Bulls make the playoffs? Well, here are my Eastern Conference standings prediction of, two, of the 2016-17 NBA season. Number 15, the Philadelphia 76ers with a projected record of 22-60. and 60. As you might have seen in my What If Ben Simmons Was Traded to OKC video, I say that he helps the 76ers improve 26 games. But... He is now injured, so this is a big worry, so that's why they have less wins and why they are in this position, rather than in something like 14th or 13th. But they do get lots of extra wins because of their now healthy rookie, Joel Embiid, and if Nerland's Noel is traded this season, the chemistry will be better, therefore helping the team, the team improve more games in the 2017-18 season. Number 14, the Brooklyn Nets with a projected record of 27 and 55. Chemistry looks to be poor. Some players fail to live up to their potential, but if we skip the mountain of negatives, we get one positive from this team. Brook Lopez. He is projected to put up a double-double in each game, um, which is legendary stuff from such a strong player. I wouldn't be surprised if he would want to be traded at this point, but he seems happy enough now, so I think he'll stay with Brooklyn. Number 13, the Orlando Magic with a projected record of 36 and 46. I really feel this team can lift and become one of the teams to beat in a season. They have, they have signed Bismack Biombo and Aaron Gordon is a legend. But then again, this team has its flaws. They got Bismack for no reason. They have plenty of great height in Nikola Vucevic and up and coming Zimmerman. Also, they brought they brought in Sergi Barker, and I don't think Ibaka is too happy going to this team. Plus, they dropped Aaron Gordon to small forward. He was doing perfectly fine in power forward position. After all these mistakes, I just don't see the Orlando Magic heading heading anywhere near the playoff. Number 12, the Washington Wizards with a projected record of 39 and 43. This should be a great team, but for me, the reason they are just this low is chemistry issues with John Wall and Bradley Beal. On paper, this team looks great, but I just don't see them making a tough contest on the rest of the league. A big rebuild around one of these players is in order. Number 11, the Detroit Pistons with a projected record of 40 and 42. Now a lot of people will wonder why these guys are this low. Well, in my head, I see stronger teams in this team like Milwaukee and the Knicks. Yeah, Andre Drummond, powerful center, but I reckon Detroit may need a mini rebuild if they want to take LeBron, take down LeBron James and his Cavaliers. Number 10. The Indiana Pacers with a projected record of 43 and 39. Same thing here with the Pacers. They have young Miles Turner, Paul George, probably one of the best players currently, and Jeff Teague, a great mentor for Turner and other young players. <clears throat> but I have my same argument. Something about the next nine teams defeats these guys. If it's unpredictability, experience, chemistry, whatever, it beats this team. I do have to say, this is a great team I, I would love to watch playing, but I'm a bit concerned about their depth coming off the bench too. Just the young players, I don't know. Something about it doesn't seem right for the Pacers roster. Number 9, the Milwaukee Bucks with a projected record of 44 and 38. I see legitimate potential out of these guys. Michael Zemba has said this in his video on Giannis and Zacumpo, but this team, the, their way of playing ball in a completely new way is just amazing. I don't see them making the playoffs just yet, but if they can get Giannis around the ball carrying more, the opposing team is going to have an extremely tough time defending the Bucks. Number 8, the Charlotte Hornets, with a projected record of 46 and 36. This team seems 
okay, I guess. Kemba Walker is really the best part of this team, but the depth coming off the bench has really helped me put them this far up. As you can tell, not as good as they were last season, but that's because I see plenty more teams that can outdo these guys any day. Number 7, the Chicago Bulls, with a projected record of 46 and 36. A lot of you may be surprised at this, but honestly, don't be. This team could go as far as 2nd seed or as low as 10th, but it really depends on chemistry and how they go cooperating together on the court. This preseason, they have been amazing, I personally think, because 1. They beat the Cavs, Pacers and Bucks, and 2. They have some great depth from their bench. Honestly, I don't think Butt will like it, but it's kind of his team now. The only thing that makes this team look bad is inconsistency. In the preseason, they have defeated some brilliant teams but lost to some who were just grouping together, so that could be a problem. Number 6, the New York Knicks, with a projected record of 48 and 34. Again, these guys look like they could go between anywhere between 12th and 2nd, but they really fit in here. If they gel well, they could probably win at least 50, but I'm going on the safe side for this. Another thing people say is that they would be better suited in 2011, and I have to agree on that. Yes, they would more likely win a championship then, but Rose is returning to his old form from his MVP year, and Chris Stapp's Porzingis is just a great player in general. Doesn't it seem obvious now? Number 5, the Miami Heat, with a projected record of 48 and 34. What? This roster sucks. You're probably wondering why these guys are, are this high up. Well, one reason is Goran Drogic. So long as he is not traded during the season and gets back to his Phoenix Suns form, this team can dominate with Dion Waiters backing him up. And down the defensive side, we have Hassan Whiteside. Whiteside can be crucial defensively. But if these guys don't live up the, to the expectations, they can probably go down to maybe 8th, but I feel these guys are playoff contenders. Another thing is that DeMarcus Cousins is rumoured to be traded here with Rudy Gay for Goran Drogic and Hassan Whiteside. If this does happen, Miami should take this as a positive because Cousins is on top of his game right now and Rudy Gay is just an all-around star. Number 4, the Atlanta Hawks, with a projected record of 50-32. and 32. They have included Dwight Howard and most people say, oh, he's going to ruin the franchise like what he did to the Lakers and Rockets. Well, these guys have obviously not been watching the preseason because what, from what I've seen, Dwight is putting plenty of potential into this already brilliant team. Howard looks to be playing like he was in Orlando, which is what he needs. He needs to block out the hate, focus on his game and become the star he, know, he knows he is. I believe in you, Dwight. I believe in you. Number 3, the Toronto Raptors with a projected record of 51 and 31. Now Toronto has great potential and they are definitely a team that can take down LeBron, but the offseason did suck for them. They lost Bismack, who thrived in the playoffs. Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan did play wonderfully together in the Olympics, and if they do play like that this NBA season, then this team has a chance to win a championship in the next few years. Number 2, the Boston Celtics, with a projected record of 53 and 29. This team was always going to stand out. The off-season for these guys has been huge and very successful. They acquired Al Horford, projected to get a double-double by the way, and are packed with a young roster full of potential stars. Gerald Green, a great player from the bench, Marcus Smart, a young and smart point guard, and Isaiah Thomas, a legendary player. Al Horford, an aggressive player up at the centre position. Everything works here, and I feel these guys will make a playoff push and possibly knock the Cavs off their throne. And number one, the Cleveland Cavaliers with a projected record of 54 and 28. Of course it would be LeBron and his army. LeBron is probably the best player in the league right now and Kyrie is right behind him. These guys will seek out going back to back but the Eastern Conference I have just listed is now a worthy conference so I believe his trek to the finals will be a tough one. And if he does get there he must versus the Warriors. The insanely good team who seems almost certain to win. 
The Eastern Conference is divided. You have teams that are rising but aren't yet to make the playoffs because more experienced teams fall to lower places with higher records. Wait, did you notice something? The Eastern Conference seems to be the better conference this year? Yes, the teams go more in depth from the West, and that's all right because the East are on the rise. But back to the teams, the top four are very even here, unlike the West. Cleveland has the best record, but Celtics are pushing through and are getting stronger. In conclusion, the East is now an interesting conference to watch and young teams are rising. There are some trade rumours speculation, but that but past that, we have a very interesting year ahead. But who's going to win the MVP? Defensive Player of the Year? Rookie of the Year? The Championship? Well, you'll have to wait for the last video in this series, hopefully with, out within the next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said in my Western Conference preview, I wanted to do this video to share my thoughts with you guys before the NBA season started, which I've just missed, but it's only the first week, so that's okay. Do you agree with this video? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks again so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And peace out, my friends.